And so, um, well, so I, you know, if I want to do it, because I even, you know, can I, true confessions? Please. I even slip into, well, Lord, what am I supposed to do about that? And yeah. I know better. Yeah. Because we, you know, a lot of people, well, prayer is just talking to God. But if you talk to him with his word, yes. which is, which is the, the, you know, in Ephesians, he has told us this will open up the realm. The word of God is spirit and it's life. Yes. The word of God is spirit. It'll divide. Yes. You know, Hebrews 4 and 12, the word divides between what you want and what he wants. Yes, very well said. So you've got to take that Ephesians prayer and it'll begin to divide off what's soul yes. and what's spirit. Yes. So, so you start with asking the Lord, how would you tell someone if someone's never prayed that prayer before? Mm -hmm. How would you start them? How would I? You, just, you did. You went through it. But how would you start them off with the, the simplest form? How, somebody, you know, and you do this all the time. You've been a prayer coordinator. You help people. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you tell someone to start? What would you tell them to do? Um, I would tell them in the most simple format I know of is to take that prayer in Ephesians 1, 17, 17 through 23. And first of all, don't see how long you can pray it. See how short you can pray it. Just pray it. And then Are pray. Are you serious? I'm so serial. I'm so serious. I'm trying to be serial <laughs> instead of serious because I like it. Because people think of that the longer I pray, the more spiritual I am. And that's why Jesus said, take heed that you don't make long prayers for show. Because we're not in this for works like, oh, can you give me this now because I did all this work. It's about effectualness. And many times effectualness is connected to not seeing how long, but seeing how short. And then if you do go longer periods of time, it's more refreshing. You don't feel like you're in works. You come out, you're not oppressed. Like, oh, I didn't pray long enough. <laughs> See, if you come out of prayer like this, suck it. But if you come out of prayer like this, Praise God, hallelujah. And this is a good sign that it's safe prayer as well. Yeah. Comes out in a victory. You didn't work for your blessing because Jesus already did all the work that's yeah. necessary. Yeah. So yeah, um, I say pray as short as you can and then let the unction or the inspiration of the Holy Ghost rise up, interrupt your prayer time if you will, uh -huh. hallelujah. And then just ride that. Prayer shouldn't be like a cross country skiing experience. <sighs> it should be more like water skiing. Although I don't know whoever invented that. Let's put two planks of wood on our feet and have something motorized drag us across the lake. No, it's not good. I tried it one time and there were my arms and I just, my body's just bobbing there like some highlighted boy. It was a horrifying experience. But anyway, so yeah, the most simple example, and prayer should be fun because the Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy. Jesus is not bummed out. And I just told this one guy the other day, he goes, wow, that prayer time was fun. I'm like, yeah, when the Lord comes back, I think he's gonna be in a lot better mood than most people thought. <laughs> so in his presence is fullness of joy, hallelujah. And so we wanna stay in joy. And if we stay with the word, dude, the Holy Ghost will rise up and like, so help you pray and bring you into joy. So the most simple format is to pray that Ephesians prayer over yourself and then open your Bible in the New Testament and start reading. Write down scriptures as they are highlighted to you or jump out to you. As that happens, you are strengthening that muscle of the Holy Ghost or the inward witness. Then, when you go to prayer, pray the Ephesians prayer again at the beginning of your prayer time. You're like, do I have to pray that prayer all the time? You could so do worse than praying the word of God all the time. It's like so forever settled in heaven and it will not pass away. Okay, so anyway, so I would pray that prayer again at the beginning of my prayer time. And then uh, as soon as you've got done praying that prayer, pray the whole prayer and mean it. Then dare to pray in your understanding for as far as you can. You'd be surprised what the Holy Ghost will bring up in your heart. Uh, perhaps a friend's name. You think of the president. Perhaps your pastor. Uh, perhaps all of a sudden the Holy Ghost brings up a church that's nearby you've been thinking about going. Mm -hmm. Just take that and start praying in your understanding and watch how your eyeballs will start watching your mouth as to how amazing your mouth starts praying because it's hooked up with your spirit man. And then if you do speak in tongues, I encourage you pray in your understanding as far as you can. Don't just let tongues do your praying for you because he's the Holy Ghost is the helper. He's not going to pray for you or and then when you do pray in tongues, that's supposed to be when you know not what to pray for as you ought. So it'd be good to stretch out in what you do know to pray for as you ought. And then when you kick it into tongues, dude, really pray in faith enunciate your prayer language and just see where that powerful motorboat of the Holy Ghost takes you. <laughs> so if someone is starting out and their question, are you saying, and, I, and I'm just asking, I mean, I know, but, but maybe they don't know. If I, if I started in my Bible, if I started in the book of John, 
Mm-hmm. And, and I get to where Jesus performed, uh, you know, he turned water into wine, yeah. which is, you know, interesting. And, and so I get there, but then, uh, you know, Mary says, just do it. And I look at that and I say, just do it. You would tell somebody, write that in your prayer notes. I would. Mm-hmm. And, and then do, and then as they write, just do it. What should they, <laughs> just do what? Just do it. So you write that down. And then when you're, when you're done praying or when you're done reading your, the Bible, when you, you're, you're done uh, with that scripture reading, you're going to go back to those notes and see what the Holy Ghost, because that just do it could be a key to what? It could be a key to God's trying to deal with you about something yeah. that looks impossible to do. Yes. But he gave you a simple thing to do yes. and you won't do it. Mm-hmm. And so he's just saying to you, the Holy Ghost, oh, they're reading. And so now I'm going to get that just do it to jump off the page. Yes, yes, yes. So that's what you're telling them to do. Yes, um, to pray the Ephesians prayer. And as you do that, you set yourself in agreement with the Holy Ghost to lead and guide you. For even um, John, First John says that the Holy Spirit, you have an anointing from the Holy One and he'll teach you all things. It also says in the book of John that he'll lead and guide you into all truth and then show you things to come. So as you pray that prayer, the Holy Ghost will begin to highlight scriptures. And quite frankly, people are always, especially Christians, looking for this voice or a prophet, whatever, um, <laughs> to confirm things. And that's all that office is supposed to do anyways, confirm things, not lead and guide. There is nothing even for that valid office to confirm unless the Holy Ghost has first spoken to you. And the first and foremost way the Holy Ghost will ever speak to you is via the person of the Holy Ghost through his word. Your Bible is God speaking to you. And he knows your heart. And so if that voice, just do it, uh, voice is a good word too, is all of a sudden jumps out at you, the scripture as it were becomes magnified or as Pastor Ray says, gets up and starts dancing around on the page (laughs) or just blesses you or convicts you or causes you to kind of have a question or you're kind of drawn to it, write it down. And then the next day, go pray the Ephesians prayer again and continue to read the word and watch how another scripture will pop out and maybe confirm that one. And even though people around you might not necessarily know what, what, it's con, what it's confirming to you, hallelujah, as long as it's in line with contextual passages, not when it says just do it and you go try and shoot a gas station attendant, it has to stay within the context of the love walk in the New Testament. But as those scriptures start piling up on one on the other, God begins to speak to you in form and fashion. His very word starts abiding, breaking open, and creating desires in you that were birthed of him. And then you don't have to try and do it. The Holy Ghost just rises up. The word of God rises up. It becomes flesh. And then it just, it does just go do it, what the Father has told them to do. Oh, that's good. That's good. So, so uh, how, how would someone, again, with the direction thing, mm-hmm. I need direction. I need to know whether I should take this job. How does that apply to someone to say, well, is this the job the Lord has for me? Should I move to this city or that city? Mm -hmm. How would you tell them, you know, uh, start with the Ephesians prayer, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Mm -hmm. Does that help them that way too? Oh, it's so stick those questions in there. Mm -hmm. Father, I ask you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation with regard to this move. I ask you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation with regard to this, what I think you're calling me to do. Um, I would totally do that. And then you can flip it on its ear um, because it, we're supposed to make our requests known with thanksgiving. You can turn it around and then say, well, Lord, I have uh, asked you already of this prayer. Now I'm going to start thanking you ahead of time like it's actually true. Father, I thank you. I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. I thank you. My eyes are enlightened with regard to this move, with regard to what I'm called to do. I do know the hope of your calling. I do. I'm, not, I'm starting to know the glorious inheritance on the inside. And you can see my countenance change just as I start changing the way I'm praying that. Prayers, intercessions, a giving of thanks. Make your request known with thanksgiving. Known unto God and known to yourself by thanking him ahead of time. You don't even have to have music. Some (laughs) of us can't sing. You know what I'm saying? So well, you know, make a joyful noise. But really knock it over into the realm of victory and faith by uh, thanking him ahead of time.